What's going on, guys? Tony here from Paradise Garage and Learn Auto Body and Paint.com. Hope you're doing great. Um, quickly, before we get started, if you just want to type in the chat uh, where you're tuning in from, and also if you are a Learn Auto Body and Paint VIP member or not. And uh, yeah, let me know if you guys can hear me, see me. I think we should be good. I think we should be good. Let me get back to the comments here. Um, thank you for streaming with us today. Welcome, Learn Auto Body and Paint VIP members. If you're a VIP, just say, what's up, Tony? VIP member here. And then also let me know if you're a first time joining us live or uh, if you've jo joined us many times before. Hold on, guys. I'm just switching the screen here to check out the comments really quickly. Um, all right. Brand new to your channel, Tony VIP. I can hear you. Daniel says I can hear you. Ian Warrior, what's up? Tuning in from South Bay, California. All right, guys, don't mind me. I'm in my my uh, my work bus. I'm in a 40 foot bus. This is like how it looks right here. This is my office, pretty much. I uh, got a TV, got a couch, my computer, and uh, I'm tuning in from uh, the bus here. <laughs> so so maybe we'll go out in the garage in a little while. <clears throat> but I did put out a video a few days ago, um, spraying some primer out of some small mini guns. Did you guys see that? If not, um, maybe I'll drop the link in a bit. But uh, we're going to be on for about 20, 30 minutes, give or take, guys, uh, doing some Q&A on auto body. I'm going to go ahead and scroll up and then answer your questions. I just wanted to remind everybody that this is your time here to help you um, with your questions on auto body. So the more you can give me as far as what you're working with, you know, what kind of paints or what, you know, the more you can feed me as far as your issues, if you have any issues, the more I can help you out. Cause it's, you know, obviously it's hard to help you out without physically looking at the situation. So I always recommend people as well. If you guys want to send me a, a picture pictures or a 30 second video, um, or a one minute video from your phone recording, you know, what you're working on, sending it to ninja support at learn auto body and paint.com. Again, it's ninja N I N J a support at learn auto body and paint.com. You could just forward your questions there. Um, and then my team will get them to me so I can reply back. Um, and if it's worthwhile, I'll reply back with a video. If you give me enough to work with, right? Sometimes the questions are so vague I can't really, you know, either understand them or get them back to you, you know, like help you out well. Uh, does everybody get that? Type in the chat. Let me know. Okay. Awesome. 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 I'm going to go ahead. Yo, yo, yo. I could use some help. I just need you to look at it. <laughs> oh God. I just got to look at it. All right. So I'm going to scroll up here. Um, Daniel. Let's see. Weingar says, uh, VIP here. I got a question about humidity uh, and temperatures. I've been spraying in some, I've been spraying some late in the night. Humidity has been above 75, temperature around 50 ish. I'm getting what looks like micro fish eyes, not pop. Um, you know, if I were you, I would try to paint when it's a little bit warmer out. Um, you know, 50s is really on the borderline cold you know temperature wise to be painting you know i would suggest if you could wait till if you could warm the shop up till 65 75 that would be better um but you know with 50s you're not going to get good flow out with your paint materials it's just really cold all right so that might be an issue why you're having issues with that all right so just kind of wait till it warms up or warm up your garage a little bit more um in the 70s Ideal temperature to paint that's around 75 to 85, um, you know, when you're spraying in your own garage and things like that. Um, again, Daniel says, will humidity cause this much problems when it's cool? Um, looks great. Other than the little spots, no peel or issues at all. Uh, in my experience, humidity doesn't really play a factor of getting paint imperfections or you know, some sort of reactions because I mean, here in Hawaii, we paint in the garage is high humidity at times and humidity really doesn't, um, you know, cause any major issues, not that, not from my experience. So I wouldn't really worry about that. 
Okay, let's see. How many people tuning in from Facebook? Any like Facebook dudes on? Let me know if you're tuning in from Facebook. I don't know. Um, I'm just streaming through the the streaming application here, and I don't see both screens as far as YouTube and Facebook. I just see the comments come in. Um, all right. So before I answer the next question, I'm just going to drop a link for all you newbies just tuning in. Um, I'm going to type, I'm going to put a link here to grab your free training at learnautobodyandpaint.com. Um, and then we got our sponsor site, Zula.com. They're doing a spray gun sale that ends in about Looks like five hours and 55 minutes on the website. So I'm going to drop that link as well. If you guys are looking for great spray guns, actually the same spray guns that I use every time I paint um, the Atom series, check them out on Zula.com. They're doing 20% off or whatever. And um, it ends in like tonight, six hours or so, give or take. <clears throat> All right. So let's do some uh, Q&A here. Uh, can a 20-gallon air compressor spray paint a car. Uh, and I talk about this, looks like Ricky's coming in from Facebook here. And I talk about this a lot. Um, and even in my VIP program, we cover it. Uh, you're going to be really playing catch up. I wouldn't recommend at all painting a whole car with 20 gallons. You don't have enough air volume to continuously keep spraying to go around and walk around the car. You know what I'm saying? You're going to run out of air and you're going to be playing catch up. You're going to have to wait, you know, two, three minutes for the air compressor to kind of fill back up again so you can keep spraying. So, you know, if you're spraying clear coat, you know, it's just horrible because you're going to be running out of air. Your clear is like laying on and you're going to be running out in the middle of a panel. And that's when you're going to be getting dry spots and orange peel and it ain't going to be laying out. So a 20 gallon air compressor, I would say, you know, you could paint the fender or motorcycle parts. You'll be OK. Um, 33 gallon is on the edge. I've painted a complete car with a 33 gallon. Um, but you got to know what you're doing and you're going to have to know how to basically play catch up and time, time your painting, you know, and wait for it to fill and not finish painting a panel in the middle of a door or something. You're going to want to finish your complete panel and then you're going to have to wait and then get on to the next panel. You know what I'm saying? But even a 33 gallon, if you're not experienced, is super, super tricky. So I really wouldn't recommend painting a complete car with a 33 gallon uh, unless you have experience, unless you know how to flow the uh, the single stage or the clear coat out so you don't get dry spots. The number one thing. That's why that's why I like to use the gun bud, because uh, the number one cause for paint dry spots and orange peel is not having the ability or not seeing how the paint is flowing on when you're when you're painting you know what i mean so with this thing you basically get direct light right on your panel as you're painting so you can make sure if you got a dry spot you can just go back and hit it make sure you got you know make sure it's wet you got to make sure it's wet uh before you continue you know what i mean <laughs> um Anyway, let's see. Russ, good evening. What's going on? All right. Uh, so Michael G says, spraying with an Atom X27 high volume, low pressure. Um, what is the correct pressure to use for shop line epoxy JP375? I seem to be getting a little bit of orange peel. Uh, so I want to know how to fix that. So uh, orange peel, you know, on primer is not a big problem because you're going to be sanding that out anyway. You know, it's not a huge, huge uh, deal. But um, if you want to, you know, get smoother primer, make sure that I don't know what tip size you're using. If you're using a, a 1.3 or 1.4 tip size, make sure you're reducing your primer so it flows out. OK, because if you're spraying fully, you know, basically unreduced primer, just a four to one mixture or whatever. And you're not reducing it and you're spraying it out of a 1.3 or 1.4 tip. You know, it's too thick. It's too thick. So you're going to have to reduce it. Um, maybe you're using a 1.8. Okay. If you're using a 1.8, 2.0 tip size, uh, the correct pressure to be spraying at is anywhere from 22 to 25 pounds. I even think 25 is a little too high. 22 to 23 pounds spraying primer is okay because you want it, you know, you're not looking for fine atomization. You just want to get the product on, right? So that's a good 
overall um, pressure point to be spraying primer. Okay, if you're spraying it out of a 1.3, 1.4, also make sure you reduce it and you could still spray at around 22, 23 PSI. Um, you know, it, it's also good to spray at lower, uh, lower pressures to reduce overspray. Okay, because if you raise up your pressure, you're going to get a lot more overspray overall in general, you know, when you're spraying clear coat or whatever. Uh, but with clear coats, you want to make sure you get that atomization. So I like to spray at uh, around 25, 26 pounds. Hold on, guys. I need to restart my computer because my um, let me let's go in the garage. My uh, screen here is not lighting up for some reason. It looks super dim. Okay. How's the connection? Is that all right? Let's just cruise here for a little while. Better in the garage. What's going on, Arnold? I hope everyone had a, a merry, merry, jolly Christmas. I tried to get into the the uh, holiday spirit myself, you know, playing some Christmas music every now and then. <laughs> My daughter is sad because she's like, oh, Christmas is over. Um, all right. What can I do to fix base cracking? I have cleaned the panels and spray gun and still cracks. Hmm, that's a weird. I'm not sure. You're going to have to send me photos. Let me know like what you're doing. What do you mean by base coat cracking? Like it doesn't make sense. Like does that mean when you spray it? After it dries, it starts separating. That's definitely some sort of chemical reaction. Maybe you're you're spraying over um, some sort of lacquer paint, or a 1K would do that because your base coat would would eat the solvents in there. Would eat the eat your bottom coat. Are you? Because I don't think you're spraying over a, a 2K filler primer because that would not be happening if you're spraying over a sealer or primer. So let me know. Um, you know exactly what's going on hard for me to answer that question um my car paint is peeling off in large chunks to sealer okay um not sure what you want me to say there sand it down reprep it and paint it you know i'm not sure what you're looking to do there yeah so i mean if it's peeling off in large chunks you just take 150 grit sand it all the way down, um, prime it, and then paint it. Uh, so Daniel says, flow isn't the problem. It's laying flat and looks great as finish, glossy. It's just the little spots you can see when backlighting really shows on black. Now, let me go back. I don't, I'm not sure what question you were asking. I forgot, Daniel. VIP, I can hear you. Will humidity cause this much problems when it's cool? Looks great other than little spots, no peel or issues at all. Micro fisheye, okay. Um, let me go here. It's laying flat and looks great. Little spots you can see when backlighting really shows on black. Yeah, I'm not sure, man. Maybe it's your, maybe it's the clear coat. What kind of clear are you using? Because you could have issues with clear coat and um, things like that can happen. Um, are you properly filtering your uh, your air? Do you have a filter coming off your compressor? And also, do you have a filter on your gun? like this okay make sure you're running a, a last minute emergency filter i like these okay last minute to take condensation out um water out and crap out of your air just in case but this is going to be your second filter right you're going to have one off your air compressor and then one right at the bottom of your gun here um just for last minute and this is how i like to set mine up before the air regulator 
Um, you got your filter, goes in here, goes into your gun. I leave this wide open, right? Because I adjust my air coming in right over here. So that's the pretty much the basic setup um, when you're painting. Um, let's see, how can I prep for this to paint? Yeah, so Iron Warrior, why don't you go to learnautobodyandpaint.com? I'm going to drop the link again and grab some free training there because we cover a whole bunch of that um, on the blog, in videos, and in the guide. So if you go download that guide, we're going to help you out. We're going to show you a bunch of different things. There's a lot of uh, Q&A in there. Um, it's going to be better off uh, to, to watch some videos on that. Tony, how you doing? I'm a VIP member, Australia. What's up, mate? What's up? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Daniel's a lifetime VIP member, by the way. Awesome. You know, so it might be better for you guys to send me some like video footage, 30 seconds or a minute. Be like, hey, Tony, check this out. This is what I'm working on. You know, blah, blah, blah. And then um, kind of easier for me to help you. Um, I got a 74 Ford with factory seams. What? I have a 74 Ford with factory. Seems the best way to cover them, make smooth surface. I'm not sure what you're trying to ask there. I'm going to go to the next one. Um, high humidity in Florida too, and no issue. What matters is temperature and correct reducer for temperature, correct? I'm over here on Facebook now. What's up? Cool. Damn, the my screen is not lighting up for some reason. Very hard for me to see. Now let's stay inside. I mean, stay outside. Let's just go like this. Better off. Okay, so Michael G is running a 1.4. All right, so um, Michael, I would say make sure you're reducing your filler primer. If you're spraying it out of a 1.4, make sure you're reducing that. Okay, and I just made a video last week. Check it out. Um, if you go to the channel, maybe I'll even try to find it for you. Um, let me see your channel. Watch this video. So keep watching this video if you want to. Because we covered mixing and reducing 2K primer. Seriously, watch that video. Some of you guys who missed that video, watch that video. Um, we show you how to mix primer properly um, in that video, okay? Especially if you're spraying out of a 1.3, 1.2 tip size, smaller tip size, that's the video you want to watch. And then we um, did a review on, we did a review on uh, two mini spray guns, one piece of crap one and one medium grade one. Um, great connection in Ohio. Excellent. <clears throat> Email pictures to Tony at learnautobodyandpaint.com. Thank you, Arnold. What's up, Arnold? How you doing? Um, again, guys, you can email Tony at learnautobodyandpaint.com. Um, detailed pictures, a detailed question, okay, and, or a video, super detailed, because the more you can give me, the more I can work with, the more I can help you out. Tony here in his garage. Absolutely. Any chance of live stream time change? I've been missing out a lot with current time. For me, it's now 1 a.m. on Tuesday. Holy crap. Uh, yeah. Lonnie, stop. Uh, possibly, I might even do these twice a week in the coming, you know, in the coming months. Uh, but right now, this is a good time for me. Maybe I'll do them in the morning <clears throat> one week. It'll be a different time zone for you guys. Because right now it's 1, <clears throat> 1 p.m. Hawaii, which is like 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, on my 1993 Ford, we all know about clear coat issues. It's my hood. Paint is cracked. Do I have to sand down to bare metal? You don't have to sand down to bare metal. You could just feather everything out, okay? Feather out the chips, um, the faded areas, you know, the, the clear coat fade everything as best as you can. And then you, you could use a 150 grit or a 180 grit on a DA orbital sander, get everything down. And then I would just give it two heavy coats of um, 2K filler primer. Any brand will do 2K filler primer. Okay. 
and uh, you could block that out uh, by hand, or you could cheat, you know, speed things up a little bit. Um, you could use a 320 grit sandpaper, DA it out, and then finish it by hand, blocking it out with 400 grit, and then you're ready for paint. Unless you have a bunch of rock chips and um, scratches or whatever that you want to make sure you fill. If, it, if they're deep enough and the primer didn't do it, then you're going to have to add a little bit of glaze putty um, on those spots, reprime it, block it. And again, we show you all of these tips and tricks at learnautobodyandpaint.com. So grab that free training here. <clears throat> oh, that's the video link. Uh, just make sure you grab your free training right here. Um, and then if you're interested to learn more about VIP, check it out. Um, we have a ton of VIP guys on the call right now. And um, it's helped them out tremendously. <clears throat> yep. So um, Russ here, Florida Custom Fab says, Daniel Wagner, I reduce everything about 10%. 10 to 15%, okay, is where, where you want to be reducing. Um, and he uses X27 2.0, uh, 24 pounds light first coat then a heavy second coat yeah so you know two three coats it's up to you if you feel like um you got a lot of imperfections in there and sand scratches and pits and whatnot you can always go a third coat and just lay it on okay clarification on my initial question when dealing with peeling paint, will primer filler fill the transition to level surface for paint or will I need Bondo? Uh, primer filler will do it, but before you do any type of primer, you're gonna have to, you're gonna wanna feather all that in sanding. Okay, so um, the transition from your peeled paint to bare metal or to the second primer layer, you know, on where you're sanding is gonna be feathered out while you're sanding okay and then you prime over that okay um iron warrior are you um do you have access to vip because we have step-by-step -step videos covering all of that in vip also in the free training so if you just want to go through the free training don't forget to grab it over here at learnautobodyandpaint.com for all you newbies people just getting started that's where you got to start um Awesome, Marcus. Thank you. Um, David says, what's up, Tony? Uh, my question is, can you drive around with sealer? Meanwhile, you get the paint. Uh, yeah, you can. If you're using a primer sealer, it's not going to hurt. Just make sure before you paint, you have to sand it. Okay. I wouldn't drive around um, with straight sealer. Okay. Because there is a primer filler, seal filler sealer. Right. And then there's also a sealer, a 1K sealer or a, a two part sealer where you mix up and you seal the car before you paint. Um, if it's that type of sealer, then I wouldn't recommend driving around because like literally after you spray your sealer, you're going to wait 30, 45 minutes and then you're going to put your base coat on. OK, that's the purpose of sealing right before you paint. Um, but if you're doing like a 2K filler primer, which I also consider a sealer because some of the brands um, like PPG and DuPont, if you add a little bit of reducer, it becomes a sealer. Okay, it's just re you're just reducing it down. Um, but I like to always finish that with 400 grit, make sure it's flat. You got no orange peel paint texture um, and then you paint it. So if you're using like a 2K filler primer and you're thinking and you're telling me that that's the sealer that you're dealing, you know, using, then yeah, you could drive around with it for a week or two, no problem, three weeks, even a month, um, and then get your materials. But before you paint, you're going to want to make sure you clean it, you wash it down, you sand it, okay, you block it out, you get it ready for paint, and then you could paint right over that, okay? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, Tony, can you get replacement liners and lids from Zula instead of the whole kit? I don't think so. They come in a kit. Um, are you talking about the quick cup system? Um, the disposable cup system? Yeah, they, they come in the kit. So when, when you buy the kit, like I have a few more left in, in the shop there. 
It just comes with the whole thing. I think there's 25 pieces to the kit. Um, VIP is worth every penny. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the review. Uh, best way to prep and paint over old factory finish. So um, if it's an old factory finish, I like to, you could just take it down, depending on how bad the finish is, you might have to go use a 150 grit or a 220, 240 grit, right? You just want to scuff the whole paint out, feather everything out. I would 2K filler prime the whole thing and then um, block it out, okay? Get it down to like 400 grit, 500 grit in that area and then paint it. Uh, Daniel says, I'm having, only issues I'm having is with clear, no problems with appropriate ad promoter primer or base only with clear. So I would just, yeah, again, make sure you are giving it enough flash time. Okay. Uh, make sure it's tacky, not wet. So I like to basically touch, um, the corner of my masked up area. Okay. Lonnie, stop to see that it's tacky. Okay. Kind of like stringy. If you're getting like that stringiness, then you're ready for your second coat of clear coat. Okay. If it's just smudges and it's not giving you any type of stringiness, then you got to wait another 10, 15 minutes. Uh, just make sure you look at it before you paint. Have you guys seen the video with um, Ed Bassmaster? Like when he says you got to look at it. <laughs> it's so hilarious. That's what Jason's talking about, I think. You got to make sure you look at it. Because when you see something like that, you just got to look at it. <laughs> oh, God. Can you use sealer and base from two different brands? Absolutely. You can use different brands. You could use... Uh, one brand of base coat, and then you could use another another brand of clear coat. It's all it's all good. Um, same thing with um, with sealers. Same thing with primers. Okay, just what I would keep the same is what I, what what I would keep the same is the the activator. So if you're doing like a, if you're putting on a primer, make sure you're using the same activator for that primer. Don't go using like a different primer activator for this primer that you're trying to mix up you know what i mean but you could absolutely put different brand clear coats over you could put a house of color clear coat over ppg over nason over you know whatever it doesn't matter okay because a urethane clear can go over any base coat no matter what it is Uh, when painting in the garage, do you need to turn off furnace and water heater and blow out pilot for safety? Or is it safe to leave pilot? It's safe to have the pilot uh, burning. You're not going to blow up. The paint is not flammable to where you're going to you're going to uh, blow up like that. So I wouldn't worry about it. Um, but uh, I would make sure number one is to have good ventilation. So just make sure that, you know, in your garage where you're painting, you have good ventilation, you know, that you're getting the, the fumes out as quick as possible. Okay. But, but no, um, you, you won't blow up. Okay. Um, with, uh, with automotive paints, it's not flammable to where it's going to, you know, ignite like gasoline fumes or something. I'm getting ready to paint my strip my 66 Corvette down to fiberglass. Do you have a recommended stripper uh, that is safe on glass bodied cars? I do not know of a chemical for that. I'm sorry. Um, but I do think regular paint strippers should. I don't think it would harm um, your glass body there. I don't think so. But. Um, have you considered just sanding, just sanding it down instead of using a chemical stripper? That might be a, a, a better way to do it. So just think about that. Uh, do you recommend a full car orientation coat if painting a body kit metallic 
on an older car. What do you mean by full car orientation coat? What do you mean by that? You mean priming? But if, yeah, if you're going to be doing a classic restoration, I would definitely prime the whole thing. Get it down to, to one coat. You know what I mean? You guys liking this so far? If you guys are liking this, please hit the like button. Um, make sure to subscribe to the channel, comment, let me know. Hopefully this is helping. We've been on for about 30 minutes now. Um, I'm just going to drop a couple more links and I got to get out of here. <clears throat> um, let's see. So again, all you newbies just tuning in, uh, don't forget to hit up learnautobodyandpaint.com to grab some free training and definitely check out VIP if you're interested uh, in learning more and joining the, the private community and getting access to over 200 hours of step-by-step -step auto body videos. Um, if you're looking to do candy painting, we have step-by-step -step on candies, how to paint with pearls, flakes, um, two-tone, three-tone paint jobs, pinstriping, you know, simple pinstriping because I'm not, you know, I'm not into, but we do have videos on pinstriping from other channels that I organized for you. Uh, if you're looking to do enamel uh, paint, paint style pinstriping, um, we cover a lot of information in there. So check it out. And again, I'm going to drop the link here. Zula is doing a sale on spray guns ending in about five and a half hours. Um, you can pick up a Atom spray gun. It comes with a gun bud ultra lighting system for free. Check it out if you're looking to, to get another um, another gun. Uh, Frank says, okay, I got, I'm got. i going to answer these two last questions. Thank you, Tony. You're awesome. No problem, bro. Um, how would I go about painting a rim two-tone color and not have the first color peel off with the tape, not using a paint booth? Um, as my dad would say, very carefully. So uh, if you're doing, if you're doing a, uh, two-tone, if you're doing a two-tone with base coat, clear coat, you should be fine. Okay. Because when you're spraying two-tone, um, as long as your, your base layer is prepped and sanded correctly, and you got your first layer of paint on, just say we're doing silver and blue. So let's say I sprayed my silver base coat on the panel. Um, I, you know, gave it a, an hour to cure, which is more than enough. Okay. And then you basically do your, your markings or your linings with fine line tape. Okay. And then you, you basically cover up what you don't want painted blue or what you want painted blue depends on how you're going to mask it. And, uh, you spray your second color and then you peel it off. I mean, it shouldn't peel off. Okay. It's, you shouldn't be worried about peeling if your foundation coat is prepped correctly and um, laid on correctly. So I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, just use, make sure you're using fine line tape and make sure you're using a good uh, masking tape. You could use painter's tape is a good one. It, the adhesion on that is not super crazy where it's gonna peel your paint. You know, the Home Depot, you get it, the blue painter's tape. That's a good one. Um, or you can use like an American tape by PPG is what I use, not PPG. The PPG yellow tape is good. And also the um, American tape is good. Just the regular American tape brand. Um, and that looks like this. I, I would stay away from crappy masking tape because if you start, because sometimes here's the blue tape I'm talking about, painter's tape. Okay. And then this is the American tape that I use, three quarter inch. This is really good tape. Like I said, I would stay away from, you don't want to be using duct tape. Okay. No duct tape on your painted projects. Okay. No wrapping tape. Okay. None of that crap. You're pretty much going to be using, um, good shit and stay away from the cheap shit because sometimes the glue will like stay on and you're going to really have issues. You're going to be kicking yourself if you get cheap Home Depot masking tape and the glue sticks onto your panels. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Okay. Um, do you do the jams first on a full paint job or does it matter? Um, okay, guys, last question. It doesn't matter, okay? There's three ways to do a complete paint job on a car. Number one, you have the whole thing ready, masked up. You do door jams under the hood, the exterior, everything in one day. Okay, that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to have everything prepped up, do the body only, okay, and then... You could wait a week, you could wait the next day. However, whatever your schedule is, you can do the door jams, mask the outside up and do the door jams another day. 
uh, or you could do the door jams first. Okay, you're gonna get overspray. Okay, if you don't if you don't tape it up, you're gonna get overspray around here. Okay, but then you're gonna have to sand it down again, mask up your inside, and then spray the outside. So there's and then we cover this in VIP as well. We have examples of all of this, real live examples. I show you how to do it step by step um, in VIP. So so yeah, that's pretty much it, dudes. Hope you guys are having a great week. Here's the link again for Zula. Grab yourself an awesome spray gun, same guns that I use. Um, here at Paradise Garage. And also here's the link to learn auto body for some free information if you want. All right. And a sealer on a truck be left for months before paint. How long would I have to reseal? It could be left on months before you paint. Um, just, just make sure that you sand it down. You wash it, you clean it, you sand it down before you paint it. Okay. Because you might find some imperfections, some things that you need to do. Um, you might need to reprime some areas. Okay. And I wouldn't, seal it again again guys there's something called a primer filler sealer and then a basic sealer if you're going to let a car sit for a while make sure you finish it off with a primer a 2k filler primer okay because that is that is kind of like a sealer okay if you if you break it if you get down to the nitty-gritty it is a sealer okay um, but it's not paint it's not painting when you when you paint something with clear coat or a single stage enamel that's completely sealed from the elements like the moisture and all of that right so that's like finished product um primer will absorb sealer will absorb water but it's not going to kill it okay just make sure that it's dry and prepped up before you paint okay because it will dry in in a matter of minutes or hours okay primer does dry um, but it will hold moisture okay it will protect it from the elements up to a certain degree you know you can you can sand the panel down to bare metal 2k filler prime it and it won't surface rust right it'll be fine for a few weeks a few months outside inside uh but before you paint it make sure you go over it again you know and when i mean go over it again you might want to sand the whole thing down you might want to prime it again okay and then sand it and then paint it or it might not be that bad you might be able to just block sand it and paint it okay Admire your motivation, Tony. Thank you. Well, I wasn't that motivated. I was a little pissed off earlier. I didn't want to do the YouTube live actually, but then I saw people waiting for me. I was like, I got to do it. I'm having issues with this stupid truck. I'm about to throw the carburetor against a wall. I can't find one. I want to buy one in Japan. Um, I can't find one. I The rebuild kit that I bought wasn't identical. Um, I had I was able to replace a few parts, not all the parts in it. Um, and it's just, now it's not even fucking starting. I'm so fucking pissed at this thing. It's a cool ass little truck and I'm having issues getting it running again. Um, it was running fine until I let it sit in Dallas in, in my garage for about a year and a half. After that, it was never the same. Can't get it fucking running right. And I'm, I'm pissed off about it. I'm pissed off about it. Uh, Arnold, maybe I'll send it to you. Maybe I'll send it to you, but I can't find the correct rebuild kit for it. Um, it's just ridiculous. But Arnold, I might I might take you up on that offer and send it to you. I'm still looking for one. I would rather just buy one from Japan, but I, it's just hard to get. It's a pain in my ass, man. Um, Merry Christmas, Arnold. I was so busy. Thank you for the text, the Christmas wishes. Uh, yes, we did have a great Christmas. Yes, we do celebrate Christmas. And um, my daughter is actually sad that it's over. My 13-year-old. So we're keeping the tree up until after New Year's. Screw it. <laughs> Have a little bit of joy in the damn house, you know, with all this doom and gloom on the news every goddamn week, every day, actually. Yeah, so a little aggravated because I really want to get this thing on the road. And without it running right, I can't get it on the road. You know, I want to get plates for it. I want to get, I want to use the damn thing, but it's just been sitting. And and the pro, the other issue is I don't have a big enough garage space at the moment to just keep it somewhere and just let it sit. You know, it's either outside where it's getting spider webs, cobwebs on and, you know, under a tent outside or cramped up in my little garage here, but it is what it is. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. 
Um, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And we got some new videos coming out, including the BMW project. We're going to be putting an A to Z video out in the next week or so um, on that on YouTube as well. And also in the VIP members area. So stay tuned for that. Um, the next project, I'm thinking we're going to be painting um, uh, a little moped that I have. Re we're going to be redoing it, a candy color. And then also I'm going to be painting this one wheel cap some sort of fade color or whatever. So you're going to be seeing some new pumped out videos on YouTube soon. Um, other than that, thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you guys next week, Monday, same time. And um, put a small block in it. <laughs> you know what they do, Russ? They put um, Hayabusa motorcycle engines in these things. Maybe I should just do that. That would be wild. You know, that would be wild. Just take the damn motor out already and just put a damn Hayabusa in here. But then I got to deal with the drivetrain and it's going to be a big, big project, which I guess I could do. Ah, all right, guys. Peace out. Have a good one. I'll talk to you soon and um, stay tuned for new videos on YouTube. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Aloha. Thanks, guys. Peace.